Um, the player that obviously I'm going to want to talk about first is for anybody who's listened to this podcast <laughs> before, um, they'll know that I do have a rather large soft bot for, for, for Viktor Siankov. And he is certainly one that I want to get the pronunciation correct on. Mm-hmm. Um, not to say that any of the others um, are, are worth less my, my, my correct <laughs> pronunciation, um, but is, am I getting it right with Viktor Sihankov? Yeah, Sihankov's fine. Like you can, oh, perfect. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm just very glad that I haven't been saying his name wrong all of these years because that would just be, oh, it would be, it would be devastating. <laughs> That's fine. Um, but, you know, he's he's been consistently prolific for, for a number of seasons now, mm-hmm. um, you know, from that right inside forward position with Dinamo. Um, you know, he's, he's taken the captaincy on so many, so many occasions. Um, you know, he is... He's a leader from the front. You know, he's penalty taker, free kick taker, you mm-hmm. know, turns turns free kicks into effectively like penalties sometimes. Um, you know, there, I think there was a, a stretch um, when I was, well, when I was doing my research to, to write his his scouted football handbook profile in, in number one, way back in sort of 2018, 19, um, there was a stretch where, you know, there was five or six assists and goals in a row where he just rifled in free kicks from range mm-hmm. and was just bending crosses into the box. It was just obscene. No, absolutely. I mean, um, I mentioned last season that they had a really bad year. Even They still finished second, um, but they were pretty awful in a lot of their games. And it was just Sahankov with a bit of magic, pulling something out of the bag with a, either a last minute goal, um, a free kick or something like that to bring the win. And obviously he's still doing it this year, um, but he's had a bit more help from his teammates, um, fortunately. But yeah, I mean... He reminds me of Andrea Romolenko, who, when he was playing in for Dynamo in the you know the Europa League, the Champions League, etc., in the 2010s, he was really good. Um, obviously, since he moved abroad, that didn't work out, and it was I think that was to do with the fact that he left too late in his career and injuries. But I mean, um, yeah, uh, Tsahankov is basically like Romolenko, but without as much flair. Like he doesn't do stepovers or. Rabonas or anything like that um but he's got very similar attributes where he's good at cutting inside popping at top bins maybe he's not so reliant on his left foot as he can also play inverted on the left hand side if need be and he's you know he's a he's a he's a solid player in terms of um whether it comes to scoring goals assisting and just in general having an impact on the game but especially when he's needed the most Absolutely. I mean, I, I, I just have to echo pretty much all of that. And one of the things that I really loved about him to, to, from, the, from the beginning was that, you know, he was just, there were no frills, as you say. You know, he was just very, not ordinary, because there's nothing ordinary about a player who gets double mm. goals and assists tallies in three, four consecutive seasons. Um, but, you know, there was, there was, Zihankov has a pretty much across the board, just great attributes in, in pretty much every department. You know, mm. he's, he's, he, I feel like at times, you know, he's pulled Dynamo through some really tough games. Yeah. Um, through through his own just ability to just get the ball, get it into the box, um, and and either either you know playing those one twos on the edge of the area. I love those where sort of you'll play with. I think it was you know when the last time I was watching it's probably Benjamin Verbich, but yeah. Um, you know, playing those those one twos and just sneaking in and and always finding that that room and that that crisp finish um, was just. Yeah, it, it was it was emblematic of a player that you know should be playing at that higher level, um, which sort of takes me on to the next point, which is you know he's he's twenty three, going on twenty four now, mm-hmm. uh, and you were mentioning about obviously Yarmolenko there, and for me, I, I've sort of been pining after a Siankov move for, for quite a while <laughs> um, because I just think I, I think you know the the rest of the world needs to wake up to him absolutely, um, mm-hmm. but you know it, would you would you say it's it's probably safe to assume it's his final year in Ukraine? You'd hope so. Um, I myself have also been, you know, calling for him to leave for, a, you know, at least a couple of seasons now. I guess I think last summer would have probably been the prime time. Mm. Um, this year will be fine, obviously, after after the Euros. Um, but it's definitely time for him to make the bigger step up and not repeat the mistakes of, um, you know, predecessors such as Yarmolenko and Konoplyanka, who's left, I guess, slightly too late in their careers, where they couldn't really develop too much more, you know, under the tutelage of maybe a more experienced and 
more tactically astute manager or something like that. I mean, in terms of where he might end up, that's difficult to say. He's been linked with, you know, Milan. He's been linked with the Bundesliga. He's been linked with Everton, I think, most recently. I mean, I think he would probably need to go to a side to a similar calibre of Everton where it's like, you know, they're not title challengers really consistently, but they are one of those teams that are still going to have a big impact on the league. Um, will take it to the bigger sides and it will give him a chance to make a name for himself. The issue for him, especially... I guess in this year's Champions League campaign for Dynamo, it's just the way that Dynamo plays sometimes is that they end up reverting to like long balls up top, trying to just boot it to the lone forward. And that really just takes him out of the game and he just becomes invisible sometimes when he's not allowed to be, you know, given the ball into his feet or something like that. So it'd have to be a side that caters to that. Yeah, I, I agree with what you're saying in terms of the um the, the, the moving to a side with a similar stature to, to someone like Everton. You know, you'd be expected to win roughly around forty to fifty percent of their games in a season, um, but you know, maybe doesn't have the, the, the same fan base where the pressure may be uh, as, as enormous as mm. sort of a, a Bayern Munich or a Borussia Dortmund um, or, or, you know, a Manchester United, that t- that type of thing. You know, I think there are plenty of teams out there who are in need of a no frills right inside forward mm. um, who can you know pitch in with goals he's very good from set pieces um, you know there's, there's a lot of strings to his bow there, be, there are a lot of selling points to him